of it all, and knowing that we are here to celebrate all of those things as a Center for Spirits of Living Instant. I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready to receive, I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living in Princeton. My name is Susan Neath. I'm a practitioner here. What is CSL? <coughs> Princeton. We are a loving, healing, inclusive community that teaches and practices the principles of the science of mind for the well-being and spiritual growth of ourselves and mankind. And we are grateful to be here to support everyone here in their personal growth and well-being. We have a few announcements. One, keep your eyes out because there might be, well, there will be, but the details will be on the Facebook page eventually when Mary and I figure them out. And that will be a St. Patrick's Day after service luncheon or something. Whatever it may be, it will be guided and it will be perfect. Also next week, we are blessed to have beloved Reverend Karen back um, to speak for us, which is always a pleasure. And our March and April lineup is wonderful, so keep your eyes open for that. And of course, today, we are very blessed and grateful to have our beloved Reverend Rich speaking about why pray. Why pray? So I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you all for being here today. I'm looking forward to it, too. <laughs> I can't wait to see what I say. <laughs> So this is a capo, in case anybody wonders about this thing that I put on all the time. And it's kind of a cheater, but not really, because it allows me to play these kind of chords that sound nice and open in different keys to match my uh, vocal limitations. I will surrender to my greatest highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way For every step I take is taken in pure faith And I am stronger every moment, every day My mind is willing, my heart is open wide I trust my instincts, let spirit be my guide I vow to live a life that's real and true and free and as I continue walking in this mystery I will surrender to my greatest highest good I will release any fear that blocks my way for every step I take is taken in pure faith and I am stronger every moment Every day, there may be walls, there may be roadblocks in my way. I can choose, take a higher path each day. And now I know that what I thought was safe and sound was only habit and regret that held me down. I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way For every step I take is taken in pure faith And I am stronger every moment, every day And I am stronger every moment, every day And I am stronger 
every moment and every day. Thank you, Reverend Rich. I love that song. So the topic today, Why Pray, brought to mind for myself that for me it's a way to connect, to experience unity with God, Spirit. So for our meditation this morning, we're going to do a meditation that I enjoy a lot. I will share with you that it's part Ernest Holmes, part Susan Neat, so it's really God speak at this point. It's always God speak. So I'm going to do this in the first person that you can take these words as your own. So I invite you right here and now to find that place of stillness, closing your eyes if that's available to you feeling the support of the chair of the people around you, breathing into that life that is ever present, feeling that presence as you breathe, fulfilling you and dwelling you. Today and every day, I see God's shining presence revealed. I see God's shining presence in everything that I do, in everything that I say, in everyone that I meet. And I experience that seamless union with this one light, this one love. I enjoy my sense of union, of unity, of unification feeling that ever-present love within me. Today, the Most High is revealed in my life. And from where I am, I can see the light, and I can let the light guide myself and others. That loving place of practicing the presence, of accepting the presence, of expressing the presence of God. So today and every day, I permit that beautiful flow of pure spirit to enter into my consciousness, here and now, and to radiate in my environment, that love radiating, going outward to those in this room, to those in my community, to those in the world, blessing everyone that comes in contact with this light. This flow of spirit making whole that which appears weak. This flow of spirit turning fear into faith. This flow of spirit experiencing and expressing divine love and accepting that miracle called love. I am love expressed in everything that I do. I am peace and power expressed in everything that I do because I am God expressed. And I live this gift of life, of love, of peace, of joy in all of its fullness here and now. And as we sit in this place of divine connection, experiencing love and sending love, I speak these words for each one here, knowing indeed that there is only one light, and it is that shining presence of and that presence is omnipresent. Therefore, it is in each one here, and it is in everything seen and unseen. And if it is omnipresent, it must be, and it has to be, that we are all one with that one. 
Therefore I know that sitting in this oneness, each one here is fulfilled, filled full with the love of God, experiencing the peace of God, and living into the joy that is ever present, that is our birthright, to know God, to express God, and to experience it in all of its fullness. Each one here sits open to receive, ready at every moment to see the truth, the shining presence in everything that they do, in the eyes of their loved ones, in the eyes of all whom they meet, namaste. They know they are one with the world and one with each other. This is a gift, a divine gift, and each one accepts it. So with love and light and deep gratitude, I release these words to the ever-loving law, and we all say together, and so it is. So the song I played before was uh, Morning Prayer by Karen Drucker. And uh, this song is, is called When I Pray. And uh, it's by Daniel Neymar. And I had to take it out. Uh, it's not on my regular list. And I said, you know, this is just a great, a great tune for, for the topic, for my topic. that an elaborate song. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper my heart go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where I am, God is. Right here, right now, right where I am, God is. When I pray, Feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where I am. my whole talk, right, right, that's it, thanks for coming, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. very funny, it's, uh, but it's true, and you know, I, I, I used to do it a long time ago, I don't think I ever did it here, 
and I had to go back and find it in my my documents and figure, you know, remember how it went and put the chords back and all that stuff. And I said, geez, that's such a pretty song because Daniel does that. You know, Daniel, I'm going if people are very familiar with that, I did a lot of his tunes and he's an amazing um, songwriter and uh, an amazing man and uh, and he's just added so much to our teaching. He and uh, Karen Drucker who wrote the other tune I did about morning prayer, Don and Michael, um, they've all been such an inspiration to all of us and um, and just so you know, we, there is an organization that distributes funds to them, and we're a member of it. And we, we pay every year some money so that they get some money for their work that they do. And Daniel uh, has given everyone permission to use his songs if we, um, uh, if we buy his materials, which we have done. So they're wonderful people. I, I've had the... Uh, amazing experience to play with them a couple of times at SOMR. They let me come in and play and uh, they're just, David Alt, they're all incredible uh, musicians and wonderful people. So that's, that's to say um, when I pray, uh, I, I actually pray sometimes to just thank them for what they add to us and to add to our our services. Um, they're amazing people and, and that's one of the uses of prayer is gratitude. And some, I, it might have been, I forget who it was, some philosopher uh, said that uh, the only thing we need to say as a prayer is thank you. Mm -hmm. Just just to be grateful for, you know, everything that we see, everything that we experience. It's all being added. So, um, the one guy I know uh, named Bob, and Bob was a very devout person. I won't say which religion he belonged to because it's really not important, but he followed all of the precepts of this religion. Every day, he'd go down on his knees and he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he said all of the right things, and the only thing he wanted, the only thing he asked for was to win the lottery. Just once. <laughs> and it wasn't one of the mega lottery ones, but it, but it would be substantial and it would make his life better. So Bob, as he did all of his spiritual work and his meditation and his praying and his beating of his brow and on his knees and sackcloth and ashes, please God, I am totally devoted to you, but please, please, let me win the lottery. So time goes by, and Bob kept all of his practices going. And the day came to pass when it came for time for Bob to pass. And he's on his deathbed, and he's, you know, he's he's saying his goodbyes to the world, and he's he's praying, and he's, there's a little voice in the back. Never won the lottery, but but, but you know, God is great and God is all. So he dies, his soul makes its passage. It goes to wherever our souls go, and he meets his maker. He meets that thing that we call God. And God is glorious. And everything around him is glorious. All he could ever want in the world. And all of this in this mind ethereal mind, the only can think of is oh, all that devotion really paid off. But there's a little, that little niggling voice in the back of his ethereal mind said, you know, how about the lottery? <laughs> so he, he looks at God, square in his face, and he says, God, you know, I'm your guy. But everything I did, every thought I had was for you. But it's just that one. Won that lottery. And God looks at him for a long time. And he says, Bob, you have to buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. We say our prayers. We have all kinds of uh, we have all kinds of ideas about prayer. 
what, what are your ideas about prayer? Anybody have any ideas about prayer? Why do you pray? Anyone? For me, it's um, to get out of my head and into connection. Out of your head and into connection with? Spirit. Spirit. And how does that feel when that happens? What does that feel like? Uh, it's almost like I'm, um, I don't want to say dizzy, but just in a, a, a shroud of nothingness, of peace. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else want to say what, when they feel, when they pray, sometimes we pray just for stuff, right? I, I you know, I, I needed a job one time. I needed a job. God, come on, where's the job? And I got a job that day. Well, you have to apply. Well, I had to, that's right. I had to, I had to pick up the phone and, you know, I had to look at stuff and I had, yeah, I had to do stuff. So, so that's, you know, that's, um, uh, that's like a, you know, a, a petition for, for, that's a petitionary kind of yeah. prayer. And we know what, uh, what the door said about that. You cannot petition the Lord with prayer. Mm. But, uh, but we do, and it's okay. And uh, I'm reading here, uh, it says it's a complex phenom phenomenon that it intersects with various aspects of psychology, sociology, and spirituality. Uh, we can use it as a coping me mechanism, which I do, because I wake up very often at 3 o'clock in the morning in a spin with my head in a tizzy, uh, stuck in a loop of, of anxiety and and what's going to happen, and why didn't I do it, and blah, blah, all that stuff. And when it gets really bad, I go back to my childhood, and I repeat the Our Father over and over again, because it breaks that loop. Mm -hmm. And then I'm able to move into a, a more practical and more, a deeper spirituality, maybe. And then to, to move into what we call spiritual mind treatment. So it's great for that, mindfulness and meditation. Uh, I do that quite a bit. Um, I use uh, uh, I use our first and second steps of treatment. Realization, uh, not realization, um, recognition and, and unification. And I'll just do that over and over again because that's you know that's the thing that really that really works for me. Uh, anybody else do that? Anybody else? No, I just had a, a interesting thing. Um, I, I was praying to God and I thought, why don't I get invited anywhere if somebody doesn't keep us on the bike in places? Well, lo and behold, my girlfriend, Chris, that's a firefighter at um, uh, Station 12, um, her whole family is from somewhere in Ireland and most of them still live in Ireland and they came over from Ireland to see her. And I got invited Saturday to a family function with her at her house and I've never seen so much laughter and happiness in these people and when they have a problem they talk and they talk about it mm -hmm. they don't sit there and moan and complain they talk about it and I, and it made me feel good to be connected with the, these people so I got accepted and um then um you know because I had had also asked God um for me to get engaged uh Chris and um, lo and behold um, her family has this tradition thing where they meet the person and I got accepted so in 90 days we can get um, we get a ring and we can get uh, engaged so congratulations have congratulations so that's an answered prayer um, social, social support which we do here mm -hmm. which I know it's a big part of my life has been uh, psychological benefits, um, believing in a higher power or a divine presence may offer individuals a sense of hope and agency in diff difficult situa circumstances. Now, that a lot of this kind of says, yeah, it's all kind of psychological and it's it's all kind of ethereal and I don't know, you know. And I don't feel that way about prayer. This is this is like very kind of real world based or, or physical world based. Um, uh, my thoughts on prayer. First of all, when I was I was raised in a in a, uh, a religion that purported to pray, 
and we were taught um, prayers by rote. We were, I was taught the Hail Mary, the Our Father, uh, the Apostles' Creed, and the Act of Contrition, and all of those kind of prayers. And then we went to, we would go to confession, and um, those prayers would be used as basically, we thought of as punishment. They called it pen penance, but it was like three Our Fathers, four Hail Marys, and you're back on the street. You're ready to go. And I don't know if that's a great, and I remember uh, one of the teachers saying to me, um, saying to us as a group, um, if praying is a good thing, you should pray, but don't expect anything. <laughs> don't expect to have any answers for this because you're just, you know, you're just little things that run around doing bad things. So, um, so I, 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 joined, uh, I joined this organization with uh, Reverend Frankie, who's my first teacher. Reverend Michelle was my second teacher. And um, uh, in those days, it was about stuff. You know, it was about, you know, um, more money or a relationship or blah, blah, all those things, you know. And they would say, no, it's not about the stuff. It's, you know, it's about the consciousness. And, and I, I remember like, oh, I'm about the stuff. <laughs> That's what I, and I, I read the book, I read Ernest, you know, our, our textbook, and I read, and I prayed, and I, I treated, and I did this, and I started taking classes, and we treated for each other, and some of us had cr crazy demonstrations, and some of us didn't, and, um, and it gradually, over the years, it's been about, I think it's 20, I think it's about 22 years now, and gradually, it came to me that, um, yeah, this stuff is great. And we can use prayer for like, you know, parking spaces, you know, which, which is one of our things that we do when we first start. Yeah, I don't have a parking space. The best parking space, the only parking space. And there it is, you know, right in front of the place you're going. But, but uh, gradually, um, it's, it became uh, about this, like this song, you know. When I pray, my heart goes deeper into my God and what I've come to understand is that um, that in that connection I, and when I treat I, I, I always talk about how the human meets the divine you know and um, and in that space uh, I, I come to know that there is nothing that I can figure out or come up with that's going to match what is in that space and what's, what can happen. Because I've told stories here about amazing things that have happened, and there was no way in the world anyone could have figured that out. You know, that story of my son getting the, the, the car for my son when I really needed a car, and the blah, 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 all these incredible things happened, coincidences happened which resulted in everyone in this situation getting what they wanted and um, there was no way in the world I could have designed that or thought of that and these things happen all the time it happens at work um, when I put me, myself in that space of moving beyond th thought moving beyond conscious thought and being in the place of recognizing that that there is, you know, there's a meta reality in which all of these things, the most amazing things, possibilities and potentials are present and, and can take place. And we, and it, and just the most amazing things happen in that space when I can get there. And I'm very stubborn a lot of times. I spent yesterday banging my head up against the wall about this talk. And trying to figure it out, and trying to figure it out, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? And I just stopped at some point, and I just said, "All right, I'm just going to go through my day." And um, and I came in here just so calm and so ready for this, and so feeling in partnership with all of you in this in this this idea of why do we pray? So that's why I'm asking you, why do you pray? First of all, it's what we stand on. 
affirmative prayer is right. what we stand on. Right. And it's not a pleading prayer like we may have learned in our childhood and in our past lives. It's affirming that there is a higher power and we are one with it. And because that is so, this can unfold in wonderful ways. But Reverend Rich, my question to you is, in wanting sometimes, wanting something to happen, mm -hmm. sometimes we want it so much we repel it. Yeah. So I think what is important to mention is that praying and then letting it go. Yeah. And then opening our antennas to receive the next step. Right. Even if it's one step. Right. So it's not really a question, it's a statement. It's a statement, mm -hmm. and, and that's our final, right? That's our last, uh, we have five steps of treatment. Some people say we have seven steps. Some people say we have three. But here we talk about five steps of treatment, and the last one is release. And I just got a thing on my email that um, my, my uh, desk lamp that I ordered from Amazon is on its way. And I, I didn't spend a minute worrying whether that desk lamp was on its way. I'm glad they told me, but they didn't need to tell me. I know it's going to show up. And you know, that's, we could look at that final step of treatment that way. Like, like you know, we don't, I, I never, I didn't sit there and say, you oh, know, which, uh, which distribution center is it going to come from? That's going to get there. What about the guys? Are you going to know how to get to my house? Like, I never do that. And we can treat those things that way. Treat. We can treat, treat, treat. But we can treat them as if, um, you know, we ordered it from some great mail order house. <laughs> that's never <laughs> that never forgets where we are and never gets stuck in the snow and you know whatever but but that's you know that's talking about stuff again um and does everybody know this five steps of treatment is everybody pretty good with that no so um so what's the first step of treatment recognition recognition what are we doing there what we know God as. This is all for Michelle, by the way. We're, we're fucking Michelle. So, so right, God is, God is. and what God is God? Is. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's, and in that treatment, we, we say all the words that we need to say to get us to feel that, to understand that presence. I happen to say, you know, God is infinite intelligence. God is, is uh, incredible life. God is, um, vibrant love. God is, uh, once again, divine intelligence and uh, the creative principle and spirit and the soul which, in which all creation takes place. It is all of those things. So I say that in almost every treatment that I do. I say those things because that means something to me. You may say something different to make it a reality for you, to get you that feeling. And then what's the second step? Unification. Unification. Very simple, right? We're unifying. There, God is all there is. I am one with God. There is nothing else. There's everything I see, experience, think. It is all God. It is all the one. It is all that thing that we encountered in our unification step. Third step, realization. Where's the stuff? <laughs> where's, my, where's my BMW, you know? No, it's, it's that's... Um, Hopefully, we're, we're in the mind of, of establishing a consciousness. Mm -hmm. If we want, if we need, we, we suspect that we could use more prosperity, then we try to establish in that realization step a, a new consciousness of prosperity or of its relationship. We, we, we seek to, I seek to um, make myself more of, of what will be uh, amenable to a relationship. You know, if I'm, if I walk around being grumpy and, you know, angry at everyone, and I'm not really great relationship material. So maybe I got to work on that, or whatever it is, we we seek to become more of that, more of what we want to be, more of that consciousness. Making ready. Making ready. Making. Right. Preparing the ground. A receptive environment uh, for. 
plotting the plotting the plowing the field, yes. getting the field ready, spreading whatever you need to spread in the field to get to get stuff to grow, to, for that thing to grow. Um, and you know another thing that um, that I encountered a long time ago. Um, it's 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 uh, it's not part of a step or anything, but it's recognizing when the thing happens. You know, like. Um, my story is a long time ago, I wanted to get involved in computer recording. This is back in 2000 or something. And it was a class project to get this thing done. And I, I visualized and I treated and, you know, the, the exact right system, the exact right computer, the exact right interface, all that stuff. And um, within two or three months, it all had come about. I, I did, I had all that stuff. And um, except for one thing, I couldn't make the thing work. I just couldn't make it work. I just, it was so complicated and so complex. What am I, you know? So <laughs> in the meantime, I'm going to a coffee shop in Madison and I run into this woman I know. She's a, she's a wife of a friend and I'm telling her the story. And she says, well, you know, um, my husband was a, you know, was the beta guy for, for this system. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, but I can't, you know, I can't figure out how to work it. And I saw her like three times, and three times she told me, this guy was exactly what I needed. He had designed, basically worked with the companies to, to make this thing work. But I couldn't see it because I was too busy worrying about it. So we have to recognize when it comes about, when we get our good, whatever our good is. Um, and then we have gratitude. The gratitude step, which is how I opened, and that's pretty simple, right? I am grateful to that which moves me. I am grateful to that which gives all, which is all. And then, once again, release. When we release that treatment, so when we learn this stuff, we learn a lot of words. And I know what uh, Reverend Michelle was my teacher, basic teacher, and we wrote out. Were you, were you in her class, Pat? Ren Michelle's class? No. no. Well, we used to write out, we would all, four, uh, five of us would stand up in the beginning of the in, the, in front of the church, in front of the group, and we would do, each, each one of us would get a step of treatment. And we did this night after night after night after night. And then we had to write treatments. And you start to think like, ah, oh, you know, it's all about the words. If I say the right words, it'll all be good. But then after a while, you start to understand that it's just really the feeling of it. And, and then Reverend Michelle used to say that um, the end result of all this is that we move through the world and things just fall into place. We don't have to delineate it anymore. We don't have to do that. But that's, you know, that's the consciousness that you know, I haven't gotten yet. <laughs> but but um, a lot of it's just relaxing. A lot of it's just um, relaxing, letting it come and flow. Something that I say uh, frequently is um, since, I say this uh, in, in the treatment, since this thing, whatever I'm asking for, since this has happened before and has, since this, I have experienced the, this before, has demonstrated. It, it, there's no reason why it cannot happen now. There's no reason why it can't happen. Therefore, I declare it is now occurring. Right. I, 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 in the I present. That, and that, that really helps me because, and, I, and I'm talking about things where there, I, there has been a demonstration before, and I'm, you know, nervous again or something, and and then, and, and I say that because I it's like remembering. Oh, yes, it's happened. It can happen again, or. Uh, yeah. Bring it on. Right. I um, when I I have I I have doubts. I doubt, mm -hmm. and and it and it always amazes me that I have doubts because I just have had and seen other people have amazing things occur in their lives, and I should not need one tiny bit more of evidence, but I still find myself in doubt. And sometimes I have to just treat to release myself from doubt 
and to open myself to that knowledge that, yeah, you know, yeah, the, all that stuff occurred. And, and I don't have to sit here and worry about it. I just, you know, I just have to um, sit and, and, and know and recognize my truth. Um, Holmes said, uh, Holmes believed in the power of prayer as a means of aligning oneself with the creative power of the universe. Mm -hmm. From his perspective, prayer is a way to consciously connect with infinite intelligence or divine presence within and around us. Holmes viewed prayer as a tool for spiritual realization and manifestation. He believed that through affirmative prayer, individuals could tap into the creative power of their own minds mm -hmm. and the universal mind to bring about positive changes in their lives. For Holmes, prayer was not about pleading to an external deity, but about recognizing and activating the inherent spiritual laws and principles governing the universe. In essence, Holmes saw prayer as a means of affirming one's connection to the divine, clarifying intentions, and opening oneself to receive the abundance and blessings available in the universe. It was a way to shift consciousness, align thoughts, and desire outcomes, and cultivate a deeper sense of spiritual awareness and fulfillment. And that's why I pray. Thank you, Ernie. It's, um, I think of this for me as, as there's, there's wind, the wind is blowing. I have sails. Oh, let me put my sails up. I, 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 and then, and the wind, it, it takes me. And I, I, I use, I think, I think that way. Yeah. It, it, this is already, the wind is already blowing. It is, and I, oh, I have sails. I can, I can read sails. Okay, let's go. And put sail up, and then, and then the boat goes. <laughs> I used to be a sailor. I know. You know, and, yeah. And uh, well, that had its own um, interesting, I guess. I don't know if I've said this here, but I was on a trip to uh, uh, St. Thomas, and uh, I'm, on, I'm on the boat with three other guys, and none of whom were spiritual people. They were, you know, they were one guy was a vet, veterinarian and all this stuff. And they, they um, the owner of the boat, his wife believed, she knew something about what we do and she believed in it. Mm -hmm. And she would say to me, like, you know, just like take care of everybody. Like, sort of, <laughs> sort of like that, you know, I forget the exact words. And um, so on the trip, we, um, you would, it's hard to explain, but we, we were in a flotilla of maybe a hundred boats and they were spread over for various reasons, spread over a thousand miles of ocean. So we were getting reports of weather where, where other people were. And there were times that we, we had wind because you want wind, you, you don't carry enough fuel in a sailboat to sail 1100 miles. So you want wind. And I would sit there and I would just go inside and they would look at me like I was crazy, but I would treat, you know, just to, to what, basically what you're saying, just, you know, open myself to that possibility, to that potential, and the boat would move and we would sail. And at least one of them sort of, the other two, two of the guys thought I was crazy, you know, crazy is a loan, but, but, uh, but it, it, I'm not saying that I caused the wind to happen. I don't know, but I treated and that's what happened. You know, that's all I could say. And uh, there's more to that story, but um, I'm going to end with this one more tune. And maybe you can join me in the chorus that's right here, right now, right where I am, God is. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper to my God. Right here, right now, 
right where I am. God is right here, right now, right where I am. God is one more time, right here, right now, right where I am. God is right here. we can go through this teaching and practice and practice. It's always nice to go through the basics and share each other's thoughts and how it works for each other. So yes, gratitude is a form of prayer. And this is our gratitude part of our service. We do not give because God needs the gift, but because the giving increases, broadens, and deepens the life of the giver. And we are oh so grateful for all of your support. It is what enables us to be here and to support you. So thank you, thank you for your generous donations. You can go to the website and um, there's a PayPal link right there as well. So right here. So, letting our consciousness drift into that place, letting it move into that place of connection, knowing that in that place there is only good, there is only supportive power, there is only the greatest, most loving presence, and that we are fully able to move into the realization of knowing that presence, of feeling that presence, and and taking that feeling and knowing that that prosperity abundance is ours that the center for spiritual living princeton is a divine idea in the mind of god and that we are each a part of it so it must be good it must be true and i bless each one here knowing that they are able to move into a place of knowing and um, realizing their birthright. And our birthright is to have divine abundance, prosperity. Our birthright is to have loving relationships. Our birthright is perfect, vibrant health. Our birthright is to um, experience the wonders of this existence, the wondersness, the wonders of our presence here in this this life experience. So I give thanks to that which indwells us. I give thanks knowing that there is one divine spirit moving through us as us. So I release this treatment into law knowing that it has already returned 
fully formed and fully done. I release it by saying, so it is. So it is. <laughs> Stop. I mean, I see where you're going. Yeah, I was. Um...